all week long, and that also allows me then the opportunity to be able to preach on Sunday for pastors who are going on vacation. So, here I am this morning again. Thank you so much for allowing me to be with you together, as we gather together in God's house to hear the message of salvation in Christ Jesus.
truth is not in us. has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship continues with the intro as printed in the bulletin. You open your hand, O Lord, and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melodies to our God, O Lord. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes the grass to grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food, and to the young ravens a cry. His delight is not in the strength of a horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You open your hand, O Lord, and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. We sing the hymn.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in doing obedience to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the nice son of the Pentecost is written in the 23rd chapter from the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and, sh and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock, 
out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely, and this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our hymn, hymn 576.
The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our hymn, hymn 676.
please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles returned to Jesus and told them all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When they went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them. Because... <clears throat> because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy for themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them to sit down in groups on the green grass, so they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing, and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces of the fish, and those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to God. Our next hymn is Lamb of God, hymn number 550.
Ephesians chapter 2. Let me read to you at this time the 19th and 20th verse. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on a, the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. This is God's word. Have you ever taken time to think about all the wonderful things that God has put into place for us? God has given to each one of us a mother who has carried us, given us life, and cared for us. Have you ever thought about that wonderful relationship? God has given that to us. And God has given to us plants in such a wonderful way. There's so many fabulous things to think about with plants. In order for a new plant to come into being for the next year, a tiny bit of pollen needs to move from one part of the plant to another in most plants. Sometimes this is barely a centimeter. And in other cases, such as with corn, the pollen has to move almost a yard, sometimes more, depending on how far that corn plant stretches. God has given us those amazing plants so that we will have food to eat. What a wonderful relationship that God has given to us. Isn't it amazing how birds will fly thousands of miles to migrate from their winter habitat to their summer dwelling? God has indeed created wonderful relationships for us to enjoy and to live in. The eminent scientist Albert Einstein remarked, the most beautiful thing that we experience is the mysterious. There are many mysteries that are around us, always. Wonderful relationships that God has brought into being. God inspired Paul to tell us of this most wonderful relationship in this epistle reading for today. The reconciliation that God has made for us. Paul addresses us to ponder on that work that God has already laid down for us. It is not something that we do. It is not an experience that we have to exercise. Instead, it is what God has accomplished. And now he has brought it to us. We gratefully acknowledge the relationship that God has established, that in God we have been reconciled. And in that reconciliation, we are then reconciled to each other. What was this relationship before God set up this new relationship? Let's look at that a little bit because God tells us about that in the first few verses of our text, verses 11 and 12. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants and promises, having no hope and without God in the world. You see, you were Gentiles, each of you. And what is a Gentile? Anyone who is not a child of God. The Old Testament definition of a Gentile is anyone who is not a Jew by birth. How did someone become a Gentile? By birth. 
How did someone become a Jew? By birth. Did the Jew do something to become a Jew? No. Did the Gentile do something to become a Gentile? No. Who made one person a Jew and another person a Gentile? God. God who created all things. Now, one more question. Was a Jew always a child of God? No, the Jew could reject that relationship that God had set up. But God did not reject his relationship to his creation, both Jews and Gentiles. God knew that both Jews and Gentiles sinned. And God also knows that Christians and non-Christians also sin. But God did not reject his relationship to his creation, both Christian and non-Christian alike. All have sinned and fallen short. But there is one who is without sin, Jesus Christ. Jesus, by his death on the cross, has paid for your sin, reconciled you to God, making you a child of God. Jesus, in his brotherly love for you, has made you whole again before God. Jesus made the relationship right. This reconciliation took place not in a secret, but it was an event that society, it was an event, and society knew about it. The history of the event is well attested to. There are some who have tried to prove that Christ did not live, that he did not die on the cross, that he did not rise from the grave, but they have failed in their effort. Only those who do not actually do their homework and instead make false statements are the ones who falsely say that Christ did not live after the grave, that he did not die on the cross, that Jesus was not even born. It's not a secret. This isn't a mystery. We all know that Jesus, what it is that he has done, it's a fact, it's history. The mystery of it is what the effect of his existence, of his death, of his res resurrection, what that has to do with us, how it has changed us. And now we have been reconciled because of Christ's existence. It is because of the death and resurrection that we are now reconciled to God. Our sins are forgiven. God when he sees us, no longer has our sin in view. But instead, God sees the righteousness of Christ, which God has wrapped around us in Christ Jesus by Christ's death on the cross. Our spiritual life is totally different, no longer lost in sin, not abandoned to death and hell. We are forgiven, reconciled to God. This reconciliation is not only for me, this reconciliation is for all of you. This, reconcil this reconciliation is for all to have. Christ restores this peaceful reconciliation by the work that Christ has done. He died on the cross for all of us. His reconciliation is for all, and this includes those who are far away and even those who are near. The Ephesian church was made up of those who could call themselves children of Israel or Jews and of those who were called Gentiles, Goyim, Greeks, the ones who were not descendants of Abraham. They were outside of the commands that God had given to the Israelites. It didn't have to keep all those special commandments that God had given in the Old Testament to the people of Israel. 
the Ephesian congregation, which was being addressed in this letter, was a divided congregation, divided between Jews and Greeks. And God tells them in this letter that both are reconciled to God, and so they are one body. Possibly the Jewish Christians viewed the Gentile Christians as second-class Christians, not quite as good as the Jewish Christians. To this, God explains in the text that the thing that made the Jewish people unique, that separated them from other nations, was that special laws had been given by God to the Jews. But Jesus destroyed this wall that separated the Jews and the Gentiles by completing all of the laws perfectly and completing all that was promised in the scriptures about the Messiah. Jesus wiped away, destroyed the wall, the laws that separated Jews and Gentiles. This is how that reconciliation between Jews and Gentiles took place. In Christ, who has forgiven their sin, they stand without that wall separating them. There's no law that tells one group that they are not in the body of Christ and the other that they are not. There is gospel in their lives and they believe in that peace that God gives. Paul came to those people in Ephesus to proclaim that message of peace, to proclaim to them reconciliation. This wonderful message that originated in heaven, this message from God is that those who were once strangers and alone in this world now belong to God and to one another in faith. You are God's people, united in the one body of Christ. We are the household of believers, one house, on the foundation of the apostles and prophets where the cornerstone is Christ. Christ, our cornerstone, and the knowledge of what it is that he has done for each one of us that's the foundation. That is what the apostles taught, and that is what God has told those prophets to speak. That's the foundation of the church. The church is made up of all those who believe. You are united with Christ, no matter what the age you are, no matter what family you grew up in, no matter how long you have had that faith given to you, you are in the church all believers dwelling in this one house, this one kingdom of God. Who makes the kingdom of God? Are you the ones that brought the kingdom of God into being? No, it's God's creation in whom you were built into it for a dwelling place of the Spirit. You are the believers in Christ here. You are built into this dwelling place of the Spirit who moves among us and keeps us in true faith. The Spirit has enlightened us with gifts and strengthens us even as he gathers us together in his church. So, are you in God's kingdom? Has God forgiven your sins? Has God given you faith has God put his name on you in baptism? Has God listened to your confession of sins and absolved you? Has God caused his word to be preached to you? Has God come to you in, with, and under the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper? Yes, God gives you all this and so much more. You are indeed in God's church. But what if you stray away from the preaching of God's word? What if you do not take and eat and drink the cup that God has given to you? What if you do not confess your sin? What if you do not believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive your sins? 
A Christian is only a Christian for as long as they live in the forgiveness given. A Christian, as long as they live in this fallen world with the devil tempting them and with the sinful human nature still a part of them, sadly continues to sin. But we are blessed by being in Christ and his forgiveness. Thank God that he does not reject us, but instead he loves us for Christ's sake and releases us, redeems us, forgives us. Don't leave yourself out. Your fire will go out. The way to conserve heat of the glowing coals is to keep them together, so also with religious fervor of Christ is kept alive and, and by, it's kept alive by gathering together. The devil devises ways to separate, to separate us from those sources that we need to separate us from God. You can become cold and die in the spirit by separating yourselves from God. The devil has any number of ways to accomplish this. There's any number of times that I've seen people and listened to someone complain about the pastor or about the people in church. There's any number of times when people go about feeling as if they're not a part. They're, that they're left out. The devil has his work, doesn't he? He does. Penitently, we fall on our knees before God and ask that our sin of commission and omission, our sins of predetermination, and our sins of not knowing better would be forgiven. As we stand from our confession, we stand in the grace of God who has again brought us near by his forgiveness and made us one with him, one with God, one in reconciliation with each other as his church. Before the fall into sin, there was a close bond between God and human beings. In the time of the Tower of the Babel, there was a close relationship between individuals within human society. The continuous fragmentation is the hallmark of human history and has been reversed by this profound love of God. What a joy it is to stand in the household of God in this mysterious union with God and with all believers in Christ. In this forgiveness given, we have been united in the body of Christ. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our hymn is Thy Strong Word, hymn number 578.
we stand to pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for your compassion shown in Christ Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep and the righteous son of David. Keep us trusting at all times in your right hand in whom true satisfaction is found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' compassion for the crowd, he provided bread and fish until all had eaten their fill and were satisfied. Give us our daily bread according to your will. Help care for those who are hungry and in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for your constant care and all that we, for all that we need and for the support of body and life. Attend to those in need among us, especially we pray for Zachary and Harlow and Dana, David and Carla, our Elaine and Marie, and for the father of Heather, Bobby and Alice, Brenda, Rhonda and Marcy, Sherry, Susan, Mary, Sharon, Gloria, Steve and Randy, Joanna, Jay, Bev, Harvey, Bob and Kathy, Marvin, Darlene, Riley, Jeremy, and Hudson, Bernice, Emma, Mabel, Eunice, Marvin, and Dorothy, and Gerald. Free them from dismay and fear by the certainty that Christ is their righteousness. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, O Lord, that you have made us fellow citizens with the saints in life. Keep us in the true faith for as long as you preserve us in this world, that we would hopefully and eagerly await the day when we will stand with, in your presence with them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and we sing the next hymn, hymn number 461, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We sing the hymn, Go My Children with My Blessing, hymn 900. 